Hi everyone, my name is Eric Johnson and I'm a firmware solutions architect with Unfault. Today I'll be walking you through how to complete a quick start using the NRF Connect SDK and the NRF 52 or 53 dev kit and the Memfault firmware SDK. To start, there's a few prerequisites you'll need. First, you'll need an NRF Connect workspace. I've got one set up here with an example application that we'll be working through. You can see it here called NRF 52 quick start app. I copied this, the contents of this directory, from within the NRF Connect SDK, and the location is NRF, samples, Bluetooth, and peripheral LBS. So we'll be working for, through this example app today. The primary files we'll be working with are our prj.conf file and main.c. The other prerequisites you'll need are a dev kit. I've got an NRF 52.833 a mobile device with the NRF Connect app uh, for Memfault loaded onto it, as well as a terminal. In my terminal here, I have the top half set up for my shell and commands. And on the bottom half, I have this connected to my dev kits UI. Great, let's get started. From the overview dashboard, I'm going to click Set Up Project. We've already completed the first step here, so we're going to move on to the next step. Set up the SDK. The first two things we'll need to do are modify our program's project.com file and the main.c. The modifications we'll make to our prj.com file are to enable different kconfigs that bring in the memfault Zephyr module, uh, enable the memfault Bluetooth diagnostic service, which we'll use to transfer our memfault data along with a few other options as well. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this text and paste this into my prj.com file. I'm going to go ahead and save this and switch back. Next, we'll have to make a few minor modifications to our main.c. First, we're going to include the memfault diagnostic service header. Place this just like this. Next, we're going to update our advertising data so that the NRF Memfault app can easily find our device. And lastly, to add in the MDS UUID to our advertising data, we had to bump out our device name. So instead, we will modify our skin response data to include that. We'll do that right here. Next, there's one callback that we need to set, and go ahead and do that. And we want to do this just before we enable Bluetooth. Awesome. And that's all the modifications we'll need to our application. So next, we're ready to build. I'm going to copy this build command here and do one minor modification to it because I am not using an NRF53 dev kit. I'm using an NRF52 A3. The last modification I'll make is change the directory to my sample that we are working with. I'm using a completely separate app, but you're welcome to modify the example in tree as well. Awesome, looks like we've completed our build. Next, we're gonna flash our board. And one important thing that we need to do is add this erase parameter. The reason for this is there may be some bonding information that's a little bit stale. And by erasing everything, we will get that to a fresh state. I'm going to go ahead and run this. Looks like our device has rebooted. And let's confirm its operation. So we're looking for two log messages, Bluetooth initialized and advertising started. We'll take a quick look in our output here. We can see both of these. There's Bluetooth initialized 
and the advertising started. Next, let's see if our shell is enabled. Awesome. So by type, typing the command mflt and the help command, we can get a list of the commands available with the memfault shell. At this point, we have completed our setup the SDK step. Next, we're going to send our first bit of memfault data up to memfault. So our first step here is to upload a symbol file. So we can do that by clicking this link here, clicking Upload Symbol File. And I'm going to drag my symbol file to this window. So I have a Finder window set up here. Um, our symbol file will be located in your build directory of your workspace in Build, Zephyr, and the file is called zephyr.elf. So we'll click this and drag it over here to our window and click Add. Awesome. Got our symbol file uploaded. And now we will jump back to our Quick Start page. Great. Now that we've uploaded our symbol file, our next step is to install the NRF Memfault app on our mobile device. I've already got my mobile device set up, so I'm going to switch back to my terminal because we'll need some output from the device to pair successfully. Here's my Android device. I'm going to tap Start. Our device will show up in the Discover Devices list thanks to the advertising data that we updated. And then we'll go ahead and connect. We'll pair. And then enter the pass keys shown here on the bottom screen. Awesome. Looks like we've already sent up two chunks to Memfault. This was done automatically thanks to the Memfault Diagnostic Service running on our dev kit and the NRF Memfault app is able to use this to transfer the data up to Memfault automatically. Let's take a look at our next step. And let's take a look at the processing log. The processing log is a place where you can see some high level information on all, all data coming into Memfault. Great, we see that we got a reboot event. This is awesome. This tells us uh, why our device rebooted, and we can see that we've now populated our first device into Memfault. Let's check this out. Looks like we have just completed our Hello Memfault step. Next, we're going to investigate a crash. First, we're going to use the Memfault test assert command. This is going to generate an assert on our device. And the next time we connect with our mobile app, we should have some core dump data to send up to Memfault. So first, let's generate that assert. We'll use the MFLT test assert command. And great, see that our device asserted right here and has rebooted and is advertising already. Our next step is to switch back to our mobile app and connect to our device again so that we can send this new data up to Memfault. I'm going to switch back to my terminal and on my Android device, connect to my device again. And we can see that a lot more chunks were sent up this time. So this is the contents of the core dump that we just collected thanks to that assert. Next, let's go to the processing log. Awesome. We can see that we got a new reboot event and a new core dump. Next, we will go to the issues page to take a closer look at our trace. 
see that we have our new issue here and click through and check out all the data that we collected thanks to this assert. Jump back to our project. And mark this as done. Next, we're going to generate some metrics. And to do this, we'll be using the MFLT test heartbeat command. So again, we will switch back to our device and run the MFLT test heartbeat. This is going to generate a another heartbeat of metrics for our device. And again, we're going to connect with the NRF Memfault app and send this data up. Great, we can see that we had a little bit more data sent up to Memfault. And let's take a look at the processing Awesome, we've got our heartbeat metric here. Jump back to our quick start page. And finally, we're gonna take a look at our aggregate metric charts. So we'll go to dashboard metrics and see our first metrics now charted here on our dashboard. And our last step as part of our quick start will be to take a closer look at one of our devices. So as we've been sending device data in, um, we're going to take a look at the device timeline. Before I do this, I'm going to generate one more heartbeat. And on my Android device, we'll go ahead and get this sent back up. Awesome. Now we're going to take a look at our device on the timeline view. We'll go to our devices list and check in on our new device here. And here we can look at all the metrics that we've collected. So we have two data points that we collected as part of this quick start. I'm just zooming in so that we can start to see each of those points in the timeline. We can see the very first reboot that we collected during our quick start. We can see the core dump that we collected shortly after that. And then we've got two sets of heartbeats here. And we can see how each of these values change over time. Thanks for joining and hope you learned a lot on how to set up MemFault and an NRF52 or 53 device. Thanks.